Hey there, let's talk about combat engineers. The other day, someone asked me to tell them what a combat engineer was, and is it a good choice for someone that's considering joining the Army? Well, let me first start off by saying I was a combat engineer for over 20 years in the Army. I retired in 2019, so some of the things could have changed since then. Okay, first, what does a combat engineer do? I will answer this question. You will use demolitions. Combat engineers learn how to use TNT, dynamite, C4, and other explosives. You will even learn how to use these explosives by improvising. You will study calculations to determine how much explosives you need for different situations. You will learn formulas and facts, such as the relative effectiveness of C4, which I believe is 1.34, and dynamite is 0.92, and I think TNT is 1.0 but you will commit these to memory as a combat engineer. The calculations you'll learn will involve the amount of explosives needed for cutting steel, cutting timber, cutting through an I-beam, or even cutting through a door. You'll learn about shock tube, detonation cord, and time fuse. But it doesn't stop there. During the Iraq war, combat engineers, including myself, use their knowledge of demolitions to be able to destroy IEDs, which stands for Improvised Explosive Devices, and also to destroy enemy munitions. So like enemy mines, enemy rockets, things like that. Next, you will be detecting mines and marking mines in minefields while you're actually inside of the minefield. Combat engineers typically do this with metal detectors, ground penetrating radar, and sometimes mine rollers. There have been times when I found myself in a minefield with trip wires spread all over the place while kneeling down and cutting little pieces of white cloth and putting them next to the mines. Also, I remember pounding in metal pickets into the earth to string out barbed wire fences along the border of minefields. And this is sometimes referred to as a frat fence. There are actually vehicular mine detectors that provide at least some safety now. Let me see if I can get a picture of it. This is a one-man vehicle. So it can be quite lonely in there if you stay in there for too long. It actually has ink dye that shoots out where you see the, the metal detector panel. And that way you can mark the mine without being extremely close to it. Combat engineers also provide mobility and counter-mobility support. And this is basically ensuring that the infantry and other army units can move through a battle space by removing obstacles that could be there. For instance, oh, there's a minefield between us and the enemy, then the combat engineers will remove it. Oh, there's multiple barbed wire fences between us and the enemy, then the combat engineers will remove it. Oh, there's multiple tank ditches between us and the enemy? Then the combat engineers will remove it. You get the idea. Combat engineers also construct fighting positions and defensive positions. This is typically done with heavy engineering equipment like bulldozers and graders. It can also be done in light units by just using your sweat and a shovel. In a combat engineer unit, you could receive missions to dig in multiple tank positions for a defensive operation, or you could be responsible for creating berms around a military base for defense. Oftentimes, in some engineer companies, you will have a separate platoon that is solely dedicated for those type of digging missions. Other times, the platoons will be spread out, different specialties, and everyone will be expected to do that. Finally, combat engineers are often involved in bridge reconnaissance and some bridge building. Personally, from all the time that I spent in the engineer regiment, I rarely did anything that was associated with bridging. But if you go to the Army webpage and you look under combat engineer in the description, you will find the keyword bridging listed multiple times. Bridge reconnaissance is basically running up to a bridge with a tape measure and measuring almost every conceivable dimension of that bridge. This includes the height, the width, the truss, the beams, the material. And you, you take these measurements and you're basically trying to determine what the military load class is of that bridge. And that way the army knows, can, I, can it take one tank across the bridge? Can the bridge support it? Or perhaps we can take two or three tanks across the bridge, or maybe we can't take anything and we just need to walk across it. 
So that's why they use the military load class. Also, it's done to see how much explosives do you need in order to destroy that bridge. In addition to all of that, let's talk about the lifestyle that you can expect as a combat engineer. As a combat engineer in the Army, you can expect to have a similar life like the infantry. And this means walking long distance with heavy packs if you're in a light unit. This could be 10 to 15 miles a day with a, with a rucksack or a backpack of about 45 to 60 pounds. You'll probably have a machine gun on a sling around your body, maybe some night vision goggles and any other special equipment that you would need for the mission. If there is time to rest, it will most likely be outside under the stars. So what if it rains? What if it snows? What do you do then? Well, in that case, you just lay in the mud or you lay in a puddle. And you think about the better days and you try to get some rest until it's time to move out again. There have been plenty of days where I've had a dozen soldiers sleeping in the mud during a thunderstorm. And it was, as you can imagine, it was very uncomfortable. And there were times where I was on top of a snowy mountain trying to figure out how to get my teeth to stop chattering because that's how cold my body was. I wanted to get my teeth to stop so that I had an opportunity to get some sleep before moving out for the next mission. Being a combat engineer, it's not for everyone. A lot of guys, they join for three or four years and they immediately get out and they try to find a more comfortable life on the civilian side. Never see or hear from them again. If your question is, is it dangerous? Yes, yes, it's dangerous, especially if you find yourself in a combat engineering unit at a time of war. If your question is, does it take a toll on your body? Why, yes, it definitely takes a toll on your body. If your question is, do you learn any marketable skills? Well, no, not really. Unless you want to be a heavy equipment operator on the civilian side. Although as you increase in rank, you can gain some managerial leadership experience. Most of the people I found while I was in the combat engineer unit were either young men filled with testosterone and looking for a sense of adventure, or there were people that were fooled into the job by their army recruiter. And then, of course, you always have that population that are in it to try to get the GI Bill to have their college paid for. Well, I hope I answered your questions about being a combat engineer. Do you have any more questions? If you do, leave them down below. And that pretty much wraps up this video on what it is like to be a combat engineer. If you were a combat engineer and you want to share your experience or if you have any comments, please leave those down below. If you like this video, please click that like button and click subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.